Good morning, Halifax. Today, I'm joined here by a very special guest. I'm here with Sean Stevenson, and Sean is a best-selling author and creator of the Model Health Show, featured as the number one health podcast on iTunes with millions of listeners and downloads each year. He's a graduate of the University of Missouri. Sean studied business, biology, and kinesiology, and went on to be the founder of the Advanced Integrative Health Alliance, a company providing wellness services for individuals and organizations worldwide. Sean has been featured in Entrepreneur Magazine, Men's Health Magazine, ESPN, Fox News, and many other major media outlets. He's also a frequent keynote speaker for numerous organizations, universities, and conferences. And you were here last night for a conference yeah. for Dalhousie. So how was it? How was your experience? It's awesome. You know, uh, this, some stereotypes are true. Everybody is nicer here. This is like the nice person capital of the world so I've had a really good time yeah tell me about your experiences what did you get up to uh, here yeah just because I'm in and out I did get a chance just everything is is pretty uh, compact you know so I just got a chance to just walk around go to a couple restaurants uh, search out something for my son who's expecting me to always bring him something when I travel my youngest son and you know just this is my first time actually uh, looking around the campus a little bit more I just went directly to the gym while I was here which is really nice I love the big open space and man there's like two dedicated guys who just walk around and keep picking things up and cleaning things. You don't see that kind of behavior in the U.S. <laughs> no, you as don't. Well. Yeah. And, uh, and also they did it with a friendly disposition as well. So that's been pretty much my stay here. <laughs> that's good. Uh, last night when you were talking, I was really inspired when you were talking about uh, curing your degenerative spine disease. Mm -hmm. uh, so can you tell me more about that? Like, what was that like for you going through that experience and, you know, having a doctor telling you, you told me it was the no placebo effect or no SIBO effect SIBO, yeah, was what you right. said. Yeah. So hearing that at such a young age, how did you challenge that and just go about saying, I'm going to, I'm going to create my own plan here? Yeah. Well, I think there's really three ways to go about it. You know, some people just have that kind of innate when they hear something, when they get some news, they just are ready to, to go for it, to fight back, whatever the case might be. Then there's people that take a little bit of time, you know, maybe they're quote slower. And then there's people who never make a decision like that, you know, like whatever news that they get from the outside world, they just accept it. And so for me, I was probably in the slow category, you know, it wasn't immediate. Um, but when I got this, I was just 20 years old and my physician at the time told me that my spine was that of an 80 year old man's with the degeneration and the ruptured disc. And there was nothing that I could do about it. So I believed him because, you know, number one this is an authority figure. He clearly knows a billion times more than I do. And and we talked about this yesterday. The nocebo effect is getting a negative injunction. It's, it's very similar to placebo effect, but that tends to be a positive injunction. Like you take this drug mm -hmm. and you're going to have your blood pressure go down, or you take this drug and your cholesterol is going to drop, or your blood sugar is going to be regulated. And a lot of people don't know, and I was just shocked to find this out many years ago, placebos are about 33% effective on average. This is a fake drug or a fake surgery, a sham surgery, and people proceed to be healed or have that associated a result simply by getting that injunction from an authority figure. And that just goes to show the power of our minds. And that, and I shared this as well yesterday, that the human mind is the most powerful pharmacy in the world. Mm. And so a nocebo effect is giving someone a negative injunction, right? That something bad is going to happen. You know, you're not going to be able to walk or you have two months to live or whatever the case might be. And most people follow that that assessment, but then there are those people that say, no, this is not, I'm not going to stand for that. So long story short, it took me about two, two years until I had the audacity to challenge that and say, you know, this isn't going to be my lot in life because the reality is this, my physician, of course he meant well and the associated physicians that I saw after that, but they don't walk in my shoes, you know, and I know that they're not sitting up at night like I was thinking about me, you know, they've got other things they're onto. They don't know the impact they're having on my life by telling me that I can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. And so I just really decided to get well, man. And it really is kind of that simple, but I'm not saying it's easy. Easy. Most people never do that. It's mostly wishful thinking. You know, I'll try, I'll give it a shot, we'll see what happens. I hope. Those are all very disempowered 
ways of thinking and living. And so deciding for me, that's a burn the boat situation, you know, like deciding um, the Latin day meaning from and kaidir, which means to cut. And so when you actually decide, you cut away the possibility of anything else but this. So my life became fully focused and obsessed on getting healthy and doing whatever I could to make that a reality. And so that basic, that process elicited, and by the way, it's not like you decide and then the world just changes and, you know, a, a, a leprechaun jumps out and is like, you know, <laughs> grant your wish. Uh, I put a plan together and I changed the way that I was eating, which should, should seem obvious. And that led me eventually to studying the field of nutrigenetics and nutrigenomics and how every bite of food we eat impacts our genetic expression. Um, it changed my movement practices from none to something, you know, which the worst thing you can do is to do nothing. And having all of these, uh, you know, occupational therapists at the conference and coming up to me afterwards, they were like, yes, you know, <laughs> just, we have to get the patients moving. But my physicians were telling me, bed rest, be careful, don't do anything. And the third thing was true rest and recovery. You, if you're not sleeping, you're not healing. And I was in college at the time, so number one, I'm not sleeping because I'm up playing video games. And number two, I'm not sleeping because of the pain I was in. But once I got, and once I did practical things during the day to improve my sleep, man, everything changed. Because when you start, when you start sleeping well, you start healing well. So you went about this yourself. Like you kind of said, all right, I've received some really negative information. My experience is you said it was painful. Like it was hard going through this. You said every time you stood up, it was like just this pain radiating down your legs. Yeah. You couldn't sleep. So you're going through all this. Not only did you challenge what you were told and not only did you overcome it, but like you're healthy to Today, you're teaching, you're inspiring people, you're impacting people. How can we get people to do this on a global scale? Mm, that is a big question. That's a big question. And just, I think, is a great example just the feedback from, and I just dropped by the convention center today and just all of these people coming up to me and just saying how practical, like, they were like, the way that you communicated this information, it just was like, oh, duh, of course, that makes sense. Yeah. And that's really the, the, the modus operandi. I believe in order for the, the world to really jump onto this truth. And it's from an Einstein quote, you know, if you can't explain it simply, you don't know it well enough. And so really connecting with people, but making this seemingly complex, when I talk about nutrigenomics, nutrigenetics, mitochondria, all these big things, <laughs> It's very, these things are fundamentally very simple. And so communicating in a way that people are just like, of course, it makes sense, really hitting their heart and resonating with something that's attractive for them. Because people wanna be healthy and fit for different reasons. Mm -hmm. Nobody, there's not a person on the planet that's waking up like, I wanna feel terrible today. Or I just wanna be, I just wanna hate the person that I see in the mirror. We all wanna be healthy, we, we all wanna be happy. But we have psychological barriers for that, you know? And so making sure that the information is presented in a way that's caring, presented in a way that connects to people's deeper core core values, mm -hmm. that's really how you make the change. Because again, the, the, the practical steps of being healthy are very simple, right? Eat good food, move some, sleep, have some good relationships, super simple. Why don't we do it? That's really where the master does their work and finding that connection with somebody's core values and also making it very, very simple for them mm -hmm. to apply and to get results. What I like about what you're doing is that you're connecting directly with people and while modern medicine and, you know, going to school and learning about medicine and learning how to be a doctor, they're very important things. You went about your own experiences and you said, hey, how can I connect with people and communicate all these studies, all of your own research that you seem to just, you know, go through in your own time and just it seems like you love it. How how do we like what's the difference between, you know, standard medicine and what you're doing and how can we do you think we need to bridge the gap to be able to make people understand things and to just love being healthy, you know? Yeah. And, What's so really awesome in being here right now is that Dal is doing that. It's very interesting to see such a collaborative effort. I just left and saw some of the student presentations and there was the word holistic in many of them, you know? And for me, when I would hear that initially, like it was, more, it made more sense. But then I was like, this is a little bit too airy fairy. I'm a very scientific thinker. I'm very analytical human by nature. And what it really means is the whole, like the whole thing. So you've got the um, physician, 
department working with the dental department here, you know? And it just makes sense. My teeth are connected to me. My teeth are connected to my niece in some kind of a way, you know? Like, we can't just treat one thing when isolate. That's been a big problem with medicine is isolating, which is, in some aspects, it makes sense and it's good. You want somebody who's very good at neuroscience to be working on your brain if that's needed. But how does this relate to the rest of your body and your endocrine system? Oh, you gotta go over here and see this guy, right? But they're not talking 99.9% of the time, you know? And they're just passing people around. So it's becoming educated holistically, you know, on the whole person. And especially I think a big gap in conventional medicine is the the humanness of it, you know, the communication, the the care. Because there's no way that that physician when I was 20 would should tell a 20 year old kid that there's nothing you can do about this. That's just negligent, you know? And he didn't mean yeah. to do it. He thought he was doing me a favor and helping me. You know, he gave me my drugs. You know, he gave me some recommendations on things I should do. But his ability to communicate with a human, like, that's a big gap in conventional medicine. People, you know, that are learning right now how to administer chemotherapy, they're not taking classes on interpersonal communication, mm-hmm. you know, or nor do they typically in a university setting right now really work and translate in the real world when you're dealing with real issues. So uh, for me, I think that the big thing that I would want to do that says stopped. <laughs> That's all right. We'll continue. Okay. We'll use it as a snippet. Okay, cool. And so for me, the big thing that I want to see and to, and, and to be a part of making happen is, and it's already happening, is that a lot more physicians who are classically trained are moving more towards integrated medicine, functional medicine, that deal more with nutrition, that deal more with, you know, the whole person, their life conditions, their lifestyle, their stressors, what's going on in their family, what's going on in their work, all of that impacts our health because as I mentioned earlier, our minds are very powerful. And just every associated thought we have creates chemistry in our bodies, you know? So if we're not treating the whole person, we're we're treating a symptom and that's really a Band-Aid solution. You know, whatever we're treating, it's gonna come back. It's still going on behind the surface. So those are my, a couple of things, you know, but we've got the best and brightest people in the world right now in the field of medicine. But if you teach a really smart person how to do the wrong thing, they become world-class at doing the wrong thing, you know? So it's really opening up the the gates and getting people connected Mm -hmm. and talking to each other more in these various fields so that we can really have a holistic approach. That's great. And I'm just thinking, weird question. But if you could make any medical discovery, change anything about the medical system, change anybody's mind, if you can make any change, any invention, anything that moves us you know, towards medical progress, what would you do? Mm. Wow, that's a really great question. To be real, the, the first thing that jumps to mind is um, <laughs> I would administer patients not like as in a patient, as a person, but patience as a quality, because I think one of the missing things is, you know, our system is very, it's based on emergency medicine, really, you know, and giving people the opportunity to examine their options, to talk with their friends and family, to talk with other um, accredited people in the field, to get multiple opinions before you make a big decision on taking a drug Mm -hmm. or having a surgery done. That's what I would really want to see more of a, even a holistic approach and and diagnosis and treatment. That's what I would want to see happen. Mm -hmm. And I know you have to catch a plane, so I'm not going to hold you for too long. I really appreciate your time. But just before we wrap up, what are you going to be thinking about on the plane? Because I find like (laughs) when I'm traveling, my mind goes everywhere because it's time to sit with yourself to reflect. Like, what are your dreams? What are your worries? What like what's going to be honestly going through your mind? You know, I already know what I'm going to be thinking about because I downloaded some things to kind of get into. And for me, uh, wow, it's so amazing that I... I haven't really talked about this very much publicly, but I am really um, adamant about being a part of this solution. And so I've come on board as part of uh, an advisor and an instructor for a nationally accredited institute for health practitioners. And also they're accredited in Canada Canada as well. And so we've got a a workshop coming up. So I'm just gonna be thinking through how to best serve students and also to uh, educate more future students on 
you know, some potential opportunities that they have with the school and also um, just how to kind of take control of their own brand and their communication with the world. And also the other thing I'm going to be thinking about is my show, which um, if we want to give a shout out to that right now, I think it's it's appropriate, but it's called The Model Health Show. Model Health Show. And um, I'm very grateful to say we've been uh, frequently featured as the number one health podcast in the United States and Canada as well. It's our big, second biggest audience. And I've got some incre- like incredible people coming up because we do interviews. My show's a little unique. I do master classes that I teach myself, about 30% of the episodes and then 70% of the very best people in the world in their respective fields that come on and, and teach. So I'm just be th- thinking about that as well. Bringing them all together on one platform. That's incredible. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I don't want to hold you up too long. Thank you I really so much. appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Awesome. What awesome. time does your uh, flight leave? Uh, I think it is at 12. Okay. He's-